Happy Loving Day, preschool families. It's G. Saf from Butterfly Garden. I'm going to read you a story called The Case for Loving, The Fight for Interracial Marriage. The story is written by Selena Alco and illustrated by Sean Qualls and Selena Alco. First comes love, then comes marriage. Donald, Peggy, and Sydney had two parents who loved them and who loved each other. In fact, from almost the moment Richard Loving met Mildred Jeter, they wanted to get married and have a family. But for them, it wasn't that simple. And here's why. Richard was white, a fair-skinned boy who got quickly sunburned in July. Mildred was what they called colored in those days, her skin a creamy caramel. In 1958, they lived in the small town of Central Point, Virginia, where people, every shade from the color of chamomile tea to summer midnight, made their homes. Richard Loving was a tall, quiet man of English and Irish heritage. The person he loved most was Mildred Jeter. Mildred was part African American, part Native American, and she was thin as a rail. That's how she got the nickname, String Bean. When Richard popped the question, String Bean jumped with joy. The two were in love. They felt it should be their right to get married. Sadly, it was not. Not in Virginia or 16 other states. In those places, marriage between people of different races was against the law. A hundred years earlier, slavery divided America along color lines. Even after slavery ended, some white people weren't used to blacks being free, let alone free to marry whom they choose. If you married someone who had skin color unlike yours, you could go to jail. Mildred and Richard wanted to get married, but they did not want to spend any time in prison. Although they couldn't have a legal marriage in Virginia, they could right next door in Washington, D.C. So they invited a few friends and family to witness their wedding across state lines. At the ceremony, nobody objected when Richard said, I do, and Mildred said, I do too. The lovings were officially pronounced husband and wife. The blushing bride and her groom smiled all the way from DC back to their house in Virginia. They couldn't wait to start a family. But soon, something terrible happened. In the middle of the night, they were awoken from their sleep. It was the police. An officer shouted at Richard, what are you doing with that woman? Richard proudly pointed to their marriage certificate hanging on the wall. That's not good here, the police boomed. And just like that, Mildred and Richard were taken away and locked up in jail. They were charged with unlawful cohabitation which means living together against the law. The Lovings didn't think there was anything unlawful about their love at all. If anything, the way they were treated should have been unlawful. After a few nights behind bars, Richard and Mildred were told that they had to leave Virginia if they wanted to live together as Mr. and Mrs. Loving. So, with heavy hearts, the pair hugged their families packed their bags, and left their home. They tried to make a life for themselves in D.C. Richard found a job laying bricks, and String Bean gave birth to three babies, three different shades of milk chocolate brown. Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. Milk chocolate brown. Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. But the city didn't suit the Lovings. There were too many cars. There was too much concrete. They missed Central Point with its rolling hills and open spaces. They missed their friends and families. They missed their home. They wanted to return to Virginia for good, so they hired lawyers to help fight for what was right. By now, it was 1966, and the times they were a-changin'. Brand new ideas like equal rights for people of all colors were replacing old, fearful ways of thinking. 
The lawyers worked around the clock to make the case for interracial marriage as strong as possible. It was time to take the Loving case all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the biggest, highest court in our country. It is the most important court. It's where the biggest, most important cases get tried before judges. On June 12th, 1967, when the case of Loving versus Virginia began, Richard and Mildred stayed at home with Donald, Peggy, and Sidney. They were all nervous and afraid they would not win. The state argued that in order to preserve the purity of the white race, blacks and whites must remain separate. Then it was the Loving's lawyers' turn to present their case. They said it was unconstitutional to make marriage a crime because of race. And they read a message from Richard himself. Tell the court I love my wife and it is just unfair that I can't live with her in Virginia. It didn't take long for a decision to be made. It was unanimous. The court ruled in favor of the Lovings. Interracial couples could now legally marry in Virginia. Richard and Mildred hugged. They won the right to their love. They were free at last. Over nine years after their arrest, the Lovings packed their bags one final time. Richard planned to build a big, roomy brick house in Central Point. String Bean was ready to start their life over. The Loving family returned to, to Virginia to live happily and legally ever after. And that's the end of our story, friends. I hope you enjoyed that story of the Lovings and their brave fight to end a law that was unfair and unjust.